Time to dust off one of my favorite little series where I take something that's perfectly fine then get needlessly pedantic and claim once and for all that it sucks. Now if you read the title, I'm sure you're already typing your comment down below, but in case you just clicked on the notification without reading it out of force of habit, then today I'm going to give you 7 reasons why the 2021 Hayabusa sucks. I know, I know, it's sacrilege, but hear me out before dropping your thumbs down. There's so much more that this bike could have been, and if all we do is pray raise the bravery of a company for doing essentially the same thing, then we're never going to get anywhere. Now, I'm not going to spend the whole video pining for the old and classic Busa, although there is going to be some of that. I want to focus almost entirely on the new Busa and its place in the market. And finally, as with all of my This Bike Sucks videos, if you like the bike, that's cool. I'm simply saying, as one severely disappointed Hayabusa man, that Suzuki should just chuck the Gen 3 back in the oven for a little bit longer. We're going to be talking a lot about Hayabusa's today so it would be remiss of me not to mention how we will be turboing the Yami Noob Corporate Hayabusa at 1 million subscribers. The very second we hit that 1 million subscriber mark, you're going to get hit upside the head with the most legendary piece of Yami Noob content to date. You can also click that link down below and head over to yamminoob.co where you can simp with your fellow Busa boys or just write me your 5,000 word rebuttal and explain in exhaustive detail why the Gen 3 Busa is the best thing since sliced bread directly on the Discord. You'll also get entered to win some motors cycles at the same time. What's not to lose? Now, without further ado, let's dive in with number seven. The new Busa has no reason to exist. Burn the heretic! I can already hear you guys screaming that through your screens, but honestly, can you think of one good reason for the Suzuki Hayabusa to exist anymore? Now, you're about to say that it's to go fast, but any leader bike is faster. Not just by a little, by a lot. The Busa has more torque than the R1, sure, but it's slower in a straight line and around a corner. In fact, the only place the Busa beats an R1 is if you push both of them off a cliff. The original Busa was made during the height of the speed wars, and it was Suzuki's way of putting the rest of the big four in their place. But nowadays, ludicrous speed is just sort of commonplace. I mean, can you honestly think of a motorcycle that wouldn't absolutely dust up all over a car that isn't a beginner bike? I mean, even motorcycles like the CBR 500R, which aren't fast to a veteran rider, are still capable of turning you into a stain on the pavement. Sure, the Busa is still quick, but it's basically stuck in time. I mean, the speed wars are so far in the rear view that people who were riding during the time are now looking to trade their Busa in for an FJR 1300 or a Goldwing. To my mind, the Hayabusa rider flexing about winning the speed wars is the same as an ex-high school football star wearing his Letterman jacket while he serves you your Happy Meal at McDonald's. Sure, it's still got the Hayabusa nameplate, but what have you done for me lately? Number six, the Busa's engine is lame. Again, I'm sure there's some Hayabusa apologists out there that are going to try to explain to me that the new engine is actually 100% different from the Gen 2 engine because it's got some different oil passageway that disperses oil 0.312% more efficiently or some stuff. But come on guys, it's really just a glorified Gen 2 engine. Don't believe me? Let's hit you with some cold hard Busa facts. The Gen 2 Busa put down 195.7 horsepower, which at the time was prodigious. I mean, it was 2008 and no one could touch the bike, especially when it hit you with a face melting 140. 14 foot-pounds of torque. They got the boost in power in two ways. First, they bumped the displacement to 1340 cc's, and they boosted the compression to 12.5 to 1, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the compression later. With a good rider, you could hit 125 miles an hour from a standing start in 7.3 seconds. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, get ready to get sad, because now with the Gen 3 Busa, you've got, drum roll please... A 1340cc inline 4 putting down 187 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque. Yup, you heard me right, this Busa is packing less of a punch out of the same mill after over 10 years of production. Let me put it to you this way. The new Busa engine is like having a 13-inch Willy, but imagine if yesterday you had a 13 and a half inch dong. And no, there's no Manscaped ad on the way. They're claiming that this is the fastest Busa ever with new aerodynamics, but spec sheet warriors will 
find themselves gravitating towards another bike. <coughs> ZH2! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. As it turns out, we have actually found a replacement for displacement. Number five, the new Busa has too much technology. This is probably where I'm going to reach peak simpery, but honestly, the new Busa has too much technology. First of all, the bike has a million emissions things, which I get it, you have to save the polar bears and all, and that's probably where we lost our extra horsepower to. But why do I need a six axis IMU launch control, wheelie control, lift control, and a TFT dash? Yes, last week I praised a bunch of bikes because of how much tech they have. But you have to keep in mind that the new Busa costs around $22,500. At that price point, it better have everything. But at 12 grand, the Duke having all the leader bike tech is a massive leap forward. When it comes to the Busa though, basically all I want is a quick shifter and ABS. Everything else is just noise. Let's be honest for a second. You're not going to ride this bike in the rain, and you're not going to be in B mode on a Hayabusa, so the rider modes are pointless. The lift control is a bummer because who wouldn't want to lift the front end on their Hayabusa? And the TFT dash, it's really just an afterthought. I mean, look at how small this thing is. Let me tell you something from first-hand experience. There's nothing like winding the Busa out through its gears and watching the needles bury themselves in the carbon fiber dash. The new one is just too clean and perfect. I want a little rough and tumble in my Busa because that's what it's meant to be. But I guess it's competing with the modern mega sport tourers out there now, so you gotta have all the dad stuff. Number four, the new Busa is just too damn expensive. Remember how I said that the Busa was about $22,500 now? Well, we don't actually have an American dollar figure because it's only out in Europe right now. But that's still a fat chunk of change given what the old Busa used to go for. The MSRP on the Gen 2 Busa was $14,599, which means that it's cheaper than leader bikes and right in line with hyper nakeds and street fighters. It might sound like a dumb thing to say, but the Busa was always the people's stupid squid sport bike. I mean, it was really meant for anyone to go out and pick one up and flex on all their friends because they're sitting on the fastest bike in the world. Busas are meant to start out in the tens to teens and then get molested and abused by Busa boys all around the world, later to be sold on Craigslist for exactly $13,000. But at 22.5, the Busa is no longer a fun bike. It's a serious weapon for sport touring dads. Mark my words, when the new Busa comes out, there will be infinitely less Busa boys out in the world because Suzuki just doesn't care about you. I would rather have simply gotten a mild suspension upgrade, a quick shifter and Brembo's and have the bike come in at $15,000 than have a bunch of expensive tech that people just are going to turn off right away for an extra 7 G's. Instead, if I want a Busa, I will 100% be buying one off of a Hayabusa man who wants to upgrade to the Gen 3 for a factory cup holder. Number 3 it's kind of ugly. Now, I know this is purely subjective, but the new Busa is just a fat Jixer 1000, and you can't change my mind. I suppose if I squint, I can see the shape of a Busa in there somewhere, but it just doesn't look right. It's too fancy, too angular, and too clean. I've made fun of the old Busas for being bulbous or round or ribbed for your pleasure, but even I have to admit that it's a very distinctive style. The soft edges fit the character of the bike very well, especially when it comes to the Gen 1. The bike's engine is super powerful. It'll rip your arms off, sure, but it's also a very rideable motorcycle. It's shockingly docile until you wick the throttle open. The 2021 redesign looks like a Jixer 1000 with a dad bod. Between the ram air around the single headlight to the shape of the passenger seat cowl, the Busa looks to have inherited a little too much from its leader bike brethren. The lines on the bike are all sharp and pointy to look fast and mean, but the thing is that the Busa already looked fast and mean, but in sort of an adorable way. The new Busa looks like it just hit its edgy phase. Another thing that bothers me is that the Busa is still packing its twin exhaust systems, one on each side. They probably could have made a single-sided exhaust that's just as effective and a ton lighter. Perhaps the more egregious thing on the bike, though, is that the trademark Kanji logo on the side seems to just be slapped on there as an afterthought. It's just one flat color and all straight lines and purposeful. That's probably the single silliest thing about the bike, and they're just going to kind to put it on there because it had to be. But hey, when you work in a corporation, I guess it's just all about ticking boxes, right? Number two, you can't even slap a fat turb ski in a nine foot stretch on it. Look, I'm sure the boys over at Brock's Performance are still going to manage to work their magic on this bike, but it's a known fact that the Gen 2 engine just doesn't have the limitless potential for power that the Gen 1 had. Given that the Gen 3 engine is now some Suzuki copy pasta, you can bet that the Gen 3 2021 Hayabusa will get absolutely 
dunked on by a bike from 20 years ago. The Gen 1 Busa was basically designed for a turbo, and even to this day, it holds all sorts of silly speed records. But I guess that's the point, right? You're not supposed to build yourself a Gen 3 turbo. You're meant to run out and buy one, get your Suzuki Hayabusa branded jacket and helmet, and then ride it completely bone stock, or maybe, just maybe, put an exhaust system on there. Anything more than that, and you should just buy a different motorcycle. As much as we clown on the Busa boys out there, those Busas are basically the sport bike version of the Sportster. Everyone's bike is just a little bit different from the others. Every Gen 3 Busa is going to look exactly the same as every other one out there. Number one, they didn't even try. This is the biggest thing for me. They just didn't put any effort to make the bike feel unique. There were patents filed for the Busa with a turbo on it from the factory. There were six cylinder configurations drawn up, but with all this cool stuff, they just decided to do a technical and cosmetic update. Let's be honest, the only reason that Suzuki did this at all was so that they could sell a Busa post Euro 5. And if Euro 5 didn't even happen, they would have just left it at the Gen 2 running unchanged like the DRZ 400. There were so many woulda, coulda, shouldas with this bike that when we first talked about it on the Yamcast, I couldn't help but be disappointed. And if the Hayabusa is meant to be one thing, it's not a disappointment. It's meant to be a big, silly ego massager that makes you giggle every time you twist the throttle. I guess at the end of the day, you could consider this video a love letter to the Gen 1 Busa, but this is why the 2021 Hayabusa sucks. Fact, despite producing 95% of the world's bourbon supply, the official drink of Kentucky is milk. Goodbye. Well, howdy, partner. How's it going? Now this video's over, but I tell you what, you click on this one right over here, you can keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. Now if y'all didn't know, we're based out of Austin, Texas, so click on that video, you might check out something cool.